Hello once again, Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage Mechanics. Welcome back to another Monster Hobbies Model Car Garage Show and Shine video. Today we're going to be looking at my dad's 1931 Chevrolet Cabriolet by MPC. This is the 1974 edition, and I'm sure you're going to like it. So let's go down to the bench and take a look at this amazing model. The Chevrolet Series BA Confederate was manufactured by Chevrolet in 1932 to replace the 1931 Series AE Independence. The Series BA Chevrolet Confederate carried over much from the Series AE, with the main differences being the sloping windshield and opening hood vents. Deluxe models had chrome vents. Chevrolet offered 14 different body styles, which were all supplied by Fisher Body. Chevrolets were powered by the famous 194 cubic inch stove bolt 6, but now upgraded with a downdraft carburetor and a higher compression ratio to produce 60 horsepower. Chevrolet faced some strong competition from Ford's new V8 in 1932, and this affected sales, but Chevrolet was still ahead this year. The engine was Chevrolet's 194 cubic inch straight 6 with a 3 speed manual transmission. The wheelbase of our 1932 Chevrolet Confederate Cabriolet is 109 inches, which is equal to 4.36 inches in 1 25th scale. The 1932 Chevrolet Series BA Confederate had a curb weight of 2,410 pounds or 2,850 pounds, depending on which body style you bought. In 1932, Chevrolet was able to match Ford's price point on their Roadster, which was $485. That is equivalent to you paying $7,753.23 in 2022. Cabriolets were built in the Janesville Assembly Plant in Wisconsin, which looks like this today. The 1932 Chevrolet Roadster was first introduced by MPC in 1963, reissued in 1974, got new hot rod parts added in 1977, and the latest release was in 1986 under the AMT Ertl logo. As an interesting side note, the Barnabas Collins Dark Shadows Vampire Van Body fits onto the 1932 Chevrolet chassis, fenders, hood, and radiator. Now it's been brought to my attention that the molds used in order to make the vampire van body were actually modified from the original molds for the 32 Chevrolet panel van that appears in this gangbuster set from about 1968. My dad built the 1974 MPC version of the 1932 Chevrolet Cabriolet and the model kit was molded in white plastic. However, unlike previous models that I've shown here, my dad did decide to paint the entire body with testers light blue and the fenders with testers dark blue. The wheels are steerable on this model kit. The hood is removable. You get these wonderful dual side mount tires. My dad built it so you could remove the roof. The rumble seat also opens on here, which is quite nice. And my dad actually painted one of the tops white and the boot in light tan, which we will see in just a moment. And here it is with the dropped boot on the back of the car. The radiator on our 32 Chevrolet Cabriolet is very much like a miniaturized radiator from the 31 Cadillac. Now my dad painted the engine red in here, but it is supposed to be gray as seen in these pictures here. This is the driver's side of the engine and we can see the gears at the bottom of the stock for the steering column as well as the gear on the side of the body. These are supposed to interlock with one another so that when you turn the wheel the front wheels will move. Here we have the passenger side of our Chevrolet Straight 6 and you can see all the spark plugs sticking straight out here. This would be the distributor and down here we have the starter motor. Here's the interior on the 36 Chevrolet Cabriolet. You can see the black steering wheel here. We've got our gear shift selector, our parking brake, and then we've got our regular brakes and foot pedals down below. Again, you can see the wonderful work that my dad did on these gauge faces, 
And up above we've got our rear view mirror. From this angle we can see the front bench seat as well as our rumble seat in the back. My dad painted both of these with Tester's light tan. This would have been a really fun car to own if you were a teenager in the 30s. On this side of the car we can see the little step plate that leads into the rumble seat. One really nice feature of this model kit is the steamer trunk that's mounted on the back on the luggage rack. And here we also have an AMT license plate, but I don't think this was originally part of this model. Here we have our 1932 Chevrolet from underneath, and we can see the front axle I-beam and the leaf spring suspension. Out back we have longer leaf springs onto the rear differential, which again uses the torque tube style drive. Here we have our posable wheels. Now they are locked in on this gear in here and they are quite difficult to actually steer once you have the linkage all hooked up because everything depends on turning that steering wheel. But here we actually have the linkage sitting loose so that we can move the wheels. Here's a close up of that steering gear mechanism for our 1932 Chevrolet. And you can see that the larger gear is hooked to the pitman arm, which has this lever here, which hooks up to the front suspension and onto the tie rods. And when you turn the steering wheel, this moves the pitman arm back and forward, which would turn these wheels. The wheels also spin on their axles. However, this arrangement is so tight in here that it's very difficult to turn that steering wheel and get this to steer. At least my dad had that issue. So that's all how this works. Well, I really hope you enjoyed that look at my dad's 1932 Chevrolet Cabriolet by MPC. And one thing that I really want to do is build a model car museum that not only showcases my dad's models, but my own models in a really cool bunch of dioramas that show different time periods and all of that cool stuff. Now, our good friend OG Garage suggested that maybe I do a Chicago diorama set back in the 1930s. And what's really cool is I do know where there is a 3D printed Al Capone figure in 124 scale. So that would be a really cool addition to add into that scene. Now, if you would like to support our museum for as little as $3 a month, you can click that join button or you can go over to our Patreon account and I will leave a link for that below in the description for this video and offer your support over there. I think that would really help with the memory of my dad as well as myself for future generations to enjoy all these models and these cool dioramas. So thank you once again for watching this amazing video and until next time everyone, happy model building!